the ICJ issue will not affect our bilateral relationship. And to make sure that we both benefit our government-to-government uh, -government relationship. And I really thank you for your great hospitality and reception. Thank you so much. Somalia and Kenya may have found a way out of their offshore territorial feud. Personal diplomacy between the country's leaders could be the solution. Somalia and Kenya have been at odds since 2009, over 100,000 square kilometers in the Indian Ocean. Each claims the territory based on where they think their borders extend to. Somalia has so far insisted that the dispute be settled by the International Court of Justice. Kenya has been stalling the court process, and many analysts think the purpose has been to seek a negotiated settlement. The disagreement, which has so far lasted a full decade, has led the governments to take small measures against each other. Each recalled its ambassador. Flights leaving Mogadishu have been forced to stop in Wajir in Kenya before carrying on to Nairobi. Somalia is seeking to be clear of UN sanctions based on the Al-Shabaab, while Kenya threatened to oppose their position. And Kenya has even indicated it might pull its military out of the southern part of Somalia. There, it has had some success against the Al-Shabaab as part of the African Union mission to Somalia, AMISOM. In the Thursday meeting, the leaders agreed to resume issuing travel visas on arrival for each other's nationals. The stop in Wajir has been waived, so flights can go direct from Mogadishu to Nairobi. And both leaders indicated they would work to find an arrangement that both countries can be happy with at sea. I must indeed say and thank my brother because we have had very, very fruitful deliberations and the most important thing is uh, we have come to an understanding that there can be no greater relationship that between the, than, than that of neighbors. Many observers have suggested that the two nations could work together to develop the area. A recent Somali oil and gas conference in London had raised alarms in Nairobi that Somalia was going to rush to complete oil exploration in the zone. Norwegian energy company DNO was reported to have bought rights to the area. The Kenyan government reacted angrily and started pressuring Somalia on various diplomatic initiatives. But Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and Somali President Mohamed Fermajo are said to have a good working relationship. The apparent breakthrough was achieved on the sidelines of a UN-sponsored population conference being held in Nairobi this week. More than 20 African heads of state attended. While the conference failed to produce an agreement on women's reproductive rights, as hoped, if Somalia and Kenya can work out their differences, it could have a positive impact on all of the African countries on the Indian Ocean coast.